And, I, and a mutual fund invest, you know, look, there are still retail investors in the market, to the, to, but just maybe not as much as before. Will they panic? Are they going to get out? Or were they in bonds? And if they were in bonds, I mean, where were they? And so that's going to be yeah. something to check out as we figure out what this day means. Right. And, yeah. means. and right now, we are down 500 points on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And we noted, I, I don't know if you heard it as well, Maria, but a, yeah. a noticeable pickup in the energy level here at the New York Stock Exchange yeah. when we hit that level there. So uh, well, people are starting to move a little quicker here because we do have only eight minutes left before the close. So a few more trades are going to be rushed to, uh, to get to the uh, the market here. Four and a quarter percent decline today on the session, worsening as we approach the close here. Energy, materials, all those very closely, uh, those companies closely tied to the economy uh, taking the biggest hit. Financials as well, led really by the European financials as some uh, runs on banks are, are, are certainly happening as that euro debt crisis continues. The Dow Industrial is down 509 points right now, Bill. The uh, markets continue to move lower here. Let's bring in some of our fast money uh, colleagues here. I think Brian Stutlin was going to join us here. We talked earlier, Brian, about the uh, the surge in the VIX index up 30 percent at this hour. What do you make of that and what it tells us about the psychology of this market right now? Well, it has surged. Even in the last hour, it's actually climbed above that 30 level. So, uh, you know, one thing I, I was saying, I talked about this yesterday on, on strategy yeah, session, that the market was rather complacent. Given the amount of movement we're seeing in this marketplace, it is cheap to own options right now. That's what the VIX measures, how expensive those premiums are on the S&P 500 calls and puts. And it is extremely cheap right now, given you're talking about a four, over a 4 percent move in the market. These calls and puts are very cheap right now. It's a Sorry. great way to, uh, to hedge yourself by you, buying options rather than owning stocks outright. How do we know they don't get cheap? Bill. How do well, we know you, they don't get cheaper? Well, what you're going to see is you're going to see a big reversal in the in the VIX, and you got to watch that, pay attention to it. Right now, we're seeing it spike. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the VIX get to 35, even close to 40, given the amount of movement we're seeing in this marketplace. I'm All the money fight. moved from from the stock market into Treasuries. That left a lot of lack of liquidity in the stock market, and so people are trying to figure that out. We don't. The bids and offers are widening out. Spreads have widened out on the floor today, and so it's been hectic down here. And I'd rather use options to control my risk. Right now. Brian, as we get toward the close here, it's obvious that they're starting to sell. The, it's intensifying here. Does it feel like capitulation to you yet? I, I'm not sure. I think what we're going to see first is I got to imagine that we get a nice bear market rally and it, it shakes a lot of the shorts out and then we get a whoosh down and that next whoosh down, that it will probably be it. When you really see the VIX get up to that 40 level, I think it's got to get to there to shake people out. Until we see the VIX stop making lower highs, that's that's when the capitulation has been here. So I don't know that we quite see it. Not to, I don't, you know, that's not to say that the market or the Dow doesn't rally back another 200 points, but I'm not sure we see the absolute bottom. We got uh, Herb Greenberg and uh, Mandy Drury still with us here, and Herb, it, 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 you're right. When people step to the internet and, and look at their favorite website and they see that headline down 500 points on the Dow, that'll get their attention. They here. go to their IRAs or their 401ks and they see how they perform today. That definitely will get their, their attention, not just today because it's a longer period of time. I, I would also really like to know, guys, how much of the problems that we're seeing in our market today are actually emanating from fear of what's happening in Europe? Yes. Uh, I, I think that was a big part of it, for Absolutely. sure. I, mean, I think you make a great point because that really did set the tone, but they, there really are all so no shortage of worries here. I mean, you've got, you know, now we're raising the debt ceiling, what, $15 trillion in terms of borrowing. You, we, we've got the deficit, uh, more than $1 trillion, uh, in the U.S. And we've got a jobs number out tomorrow uh, with uh, with expectations that we are stuck here in terms of job creation. And what will happen if we get a really good, better than expected payrolls number? I mean, suddenly will the fickle market change its sentiment and decide that everything's well, okay? I mean... Well, it's for the month of July. Yeah, um, so it's very backward looking, absolutely. Yeah. But, and we went through a period here, Herb, where the markets could look to the Fed, for example, yes. for more stimulus. And, you know, we're not seeing any kind of sign right now. Nobody's no, been job voting for the last few days. The Fed meeting is next week. We'll hear from Chairman Bernanke at that time. But I don't think anybody's expecting them to come in with some sort of a well, safety net this look, time around. We don't know. There's just a lot of there's still speculation about the old QE3. But the other thing I want to just bring up, because I keep coming back to it, is things like algorithms, things, you know, you, you say, what will happen tomorrow with the payroll number? Well, you know what? What will happen is the computers come back in, and that's what we don't know, and that's where you get this whipsaw, because we didn't have this before. We didn't have, by the way, before and prior times, we didn't have social networking like this, which is actually speeding, creating great speed in information more than we had before.
Let's bring Brian Sutton in one last time here. You're the, the short term trader. You follow the mood of the market here. What do you think's going on here as we head toward the close? Well, you know, it's, it's like I said, when, when money starts to flow out of the stock market into bonds, you know, it's not so much people moving into cash. It's actually people moving into a safe haven. And treasuries became that safe haven as soon as the debt deal got done, that people weren't worried that about this downgrade. And what we saw was this lack of liquidity exist in the stock market. And so we've seen this huge move down in the market today. You know, listen, I tell investors, let's just not catch a falling knife. Just because the market has had a big washout today doesn't mean you have to step in and buy. If you want to do that, buy some calls. That way you know what you're risking. And let's see if this market moves up and comes back down one more time. The second time, that's when I like to step in on a short-term trade and start to buy it. When we hold these levels a second time, okay. it's got to be retested. I wouldn't no, be catching a knife right here. Yeah. No heroic moves there from Mr. Sutland. Thank you. Thank nope. you, Mandy and Herb, as well. We'll be watching, uh, guys. Thank you. Let's get to Brian Shackman. We are just about a minute and a half, two minutes away from the closing bell. Brian down, 500 points on the Dow. Over to you. It's almost breathless. Let's take a look at the market snapshot, because I want to make a point what Brian talked about, because the truth is, if there was such a flight to, to safety in treasuries, uh, we'd be lower than 242. Um, people are rotating into cash. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we have gold down $17. Now, that's another one. It's... Uh risk aversion, they're not going to gold. They're going to cash. We have uh, oil down 6%. You know, the major indices were down 502 again, more than 500 points. And the VIX, he talked about above 40. Well, we're at 31 and a half right now, and the VIX, we're not that far away from it. Let's take a quick look at the S&P 500 heat map as we get to the close to give you some perspective here uh, in terms of the, the loss. Have the S&P 500 heat map? I guess we have the sector heat map. I apologize for that. Uh, in terms of the sectors, we have the best performing sectors. Consumer stables down 3%. Uh, that is just unbelievable. I want to take a look at a few uh, of the, the weakest stocks in the S&P 500, if we have them here. I'm not sure if we do. And these are the weakest. You have Alpha Natural, 16%. MAMC, 14 AK Steel, 14 which is down now 40 plus percent for the year. Console Gap is down 11%. It's across the board here. In terms of what, what it's actually doing pretty well. I want to show it to you very quickly if I can because there are a couple of stocks. These were all green about half an hour ago, but the one down the end that's now down 1.5% is Kraft. I want to look at an intraday. This company had a beat and a raise, okay, and they are splitting the company up. In the pre-market, it was up uh, 5%, and even it couldn't hold on to its gains. It's down 1.5% here. So that just gives you a little bit of perspective. And finally, I just want to tell you as we head into the close, we are down 514 points near the low. It's been December 1st of 2008 was the last time we were down more than 400 points. Uh, it's a very important hour to keep in touch with the closing bell. Watch it now with Maria Bartiromo and Bill Griffin. And it is 4 o'clock on Wall Street. Do you know where your money is? Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the closing bell. Tough day on Wall Street today. Here's what we're following at the close. We're settling out at the lows of the afternoon. A free fall for stock prices today. All three major averages all threatening to close in correction territory. And that is exactly where they closed on continued fears that the economy is headed back into a recession. The Dow looking like it will settle down more than 500 points at 11,383 on the industrial average. The worry sending investors fleeing into the safety of Treasury is pushing the 10-year Treasury rate below 2.5%. Coming up in the next hour, we're taking the pulse of the economy with two of the biggest names on Wall Street. AIG CEO Robert Ben Moshe joins us, along with Fortress Investment CEO Daniel Mudd. Here in exclusive interviews, to talk about how they are dealing with this selling. Take a look at how we finished the day on Wall Street. And again, we did close at the lows of the afternoon. The selling accelerating in the final hour of trading at 11,383. The close on the Dow Jones Industrial Average with a decline of more than 4%, 512 points a lower. Volume picked up, as has been the case with heavy down days recently. 1.7 billion shares traded here alone at the New York Stock. Exchange. NASDAQ gave up 136 points. That was better than 5% on the NASDAQ. 2556 is where the NASDAQ settles out. Technology, one of the leadership groups on the downside, along with energy and materials. SP 500 down 60 points at 4 and 3 quarters per, uh, percent at 1200, even as you can see. Let's get all the angles covered on today's sell off. Bill Griffith, Bob Pisani, both with me at the NYSC. Seema Modi is at the NASDAQ. Sharon Epperson, Manning things at the NYMEX. Brian Sullivan at the CNBC headquarters. Okay. As well, a market panelists. Ben Pace, Chief Investment Officer at Deutsche Bank Private Wealth Management, along with Gary Anderson, Co-Portfolio Manager of the Scout International Fund, managing over $8.86 billion in his fund, along with David Sowerby, Chief Market Analyst and Portfolio Manager at Loomis Sales & Company. Uh, gentlemen, good to have you on the program. Thanks very much for joining us. Bob, let me kick this off with you here. What did you see all day today? Well, I, we saw intense selling and really not letting up.
up throughout most of the day. I would note we did 6 billion shares over that. That's the highest volume level of the year. And I'm talking about 6 billion, the consolidated tape, all trading in all NYSE stocks, no matter what we're on here. I think there's two or three things that are going to matter overnight. One is whether we get any kind of supportive statements from central bank officials uh, in Europe in particular. This Tomorrow morning. Well, today you had the ECB saying that they were signaling that they're buying government bonds, right? Th was they that were buying a, a few select bonds right. in Europe. I think you're going to see a little bit broader 